มวยไทยคือชีวิต From our studios in New York City and Miami, Florida, you are listening to the Striking Corner with Eric Rivera and Vinny Scotto, your source for Muay Thai and kickboxing news worldwide. All right, hello everybody, and welcome to the Striking Corner podcast. We are back after a unfortunate incident in Florida. Hurricane Irma came by and fucked up uh, my my whole you know recording thing, and uh, finally back. I had to evacuate. Vinny, how are you? How was New York? How is New York? Everything okay? <laughs> Everything's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so um, we had to take a break because I actually had to. I left. I was in Atlanta. I evacuated with my kid, and my wife is pregnant, so I decided to get out. Um, and the storm didn't hit as bad. Everything's good in my house, but uh, you know, some damage in the house. Uh, I'm sorry, in the neighborhood. But that's it. And so now we're back and uh, able to record again. Hey, Vinny, is this thing recording? <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> uh so every time we record this podcast. Um, Due to my absent-mindedness, uh, which Vinny will always tell you is is my problem, besides being a dick and, and an asshole and all that stuff, <laughs> is that every single time we do this podcast, there's always technical difficulties. And it has to do a little bit more than absent-mindedness. <laughs> so, what would you what would you chalk it up to? You're a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is but no the thing is every time i unhook my laptop from the computer and the, you know the studio mixer all the settings reset so every single time i have to do this i have to redo it and not only that my son comes in and loves to turn all the knobs on the mixer um so every single time i gotta like reset up everything again um and that's but you would think that like when we have a time scheduled recording, especially like today, we don't have a guest, but normally when we have a guest, like you would think, you know, hey, we have a guest. I don't want to look like I'm a shitty person, so I'm going to go on a little bit ahead of time and fix it, get it set up. But no, Eric doesn't do that. I he waits till we have the guest on the line and, and then decides to waste like 20 minutes of their time <laughs> and my time and, and set it up then. What do you have to do? What? What do you have to do? plenty of things to do <laughs> I'm just joking uh, well <laughs> um, anyway yes that happens so anyway so what are we going to discuss today so we before we get into um, before we get into the topics for today or whatever uh, Vinny tell them what is going on with the striking corner shop we have a sale going on with two of our shirts and let everybody know what's going on with that uh, yeah we have the um, buy a vowel shirt which um it's obviously called that because of the way it is designed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the, the Champ Up shirt, which was our collaboration with um, Chris Romolo, a.k.a. Crom. So we have those two shirts, and we have recently put them on sale from twenty four ninety five down to fourteen ninety five, dollars mm -hmm. And um, profits from those shirts will be going to the USMF. So... You know, please help out. Get one. We want to just, you know, do our part in growing the sport in this country and getting our team, you know, our Team USA out to all these different events, which uh, next one coming up is the Pan Ams. So, um, you know, get a shirt, help out. Let's let's get get Team USA going. And uh, that's that's pretty much it for the store. Yeah. Um, and as always, uh, I think I don't think we've been able to we haven't mentioned that. Um, since, uh, the last podcast or anything, but, uh, what happened is, uh, we also restocked all the sizes for the Muay Thai is life, knock Muay forever shirts, uh, which are our best seller. So, you know, thank you, you guys, everyone that's purchased the shirt. If you haven't purchased one and you've been waiting for a certain size or anything like that, we have them all back in stock. So check those out at, uh, obviously at store.strikingcorner.com. So all those are back in. Besides that, um, I also wanted to mention something, guys. Um, I think I always leave it towards the end of the podcast. And sometimes I know people listen to this in, in, in parts or maybe don't catch the end. So I wanted to mention it before we get into the podcast today, which is, um, we're actually, um, I'm, you know, I am on my end, uh, want to reach out to people and say, Hey, listen, guys, we, um, 
we're looking for for people that are interested in writing for the striking corner website so we have we focused a lot lately on the podcast the podcast is obviously uh for Vinny and i is uh really something that we can focus on a lot more because it's something we can set up a time for and everything like that but with our day jobs and Vinny running his gym and everything like that writing is something that i used to do for the for the uh for the website and i really want to you know keep good content flowing on the website so any of you that are really interested love the sport love muay thai uh feel like you are good writers or have you know writing skills and would want to jump on board and help us out with writing content pieces for um muay thai i'm sorry for striking corner then please uh hit us up at info at striking corner.com send us uh you know send us uh some writing samples, tell us that you're interested, let us know a little bit about your background. So you can contact us at info at strikingcorner.com for that. Now we um we have had a couple of writers throughout the time. K when Anoop has done his thing, but he's also has his own show now. Matt Lucas just wrote a big a great piece for us. Um, but he's he does stuff for a lot of different outlets. So really it's it's a contributor thing. Um I just want to let you guys know what we've done with a lot of writers is you know really this is kind of you know we're not we want to obviously make money we want to do things and we want to grow the grow our our website but right now it's uh you know we're not rolling in dough <laughs> so the, this would be as a contributor this would be so as a it would be volunteer work um if you guys like what we've done in the past is we've also had i've had guys that have written for us that were like in college doing creative writing and things like that and they needed it for college credit. They needed something where they were saying that they were writing for for an outlet or something. You can do that with us, um, and you know you can help out that way. So just wanted to let you guys know. Um, contact us at Info at Striking Corner if you're interested in that. So besides that, besides the store, also we wanted to mention our good friends at Three Leopard Liniment. Uh, we love their stuff. Three Leopard Liniment oil is made here in the U.S. Um, and I just wanted to let you know you can get that at threeleopard.com. Great stuff. We use it in our gyms. Vinny uses it in his gym. He sells it at his gym. It's really good stuff. Uh, we love the guys. They've been great with us. So if you use the promo code STRIKING, you will get 15% off your purchase when you go to 3leopard.com. So check it out, guys. Uh, you know, Support a good, uh, a good uh, American brand, somebody doing something here in the U.S. and doing some great stuff, uh, making some great uh, Thai liniment oil. We all know we got, you know, when we fight or we train, that stuff is like the cure-all for us Muay Thai guys. So uh, check them out, 3leopard.com. So that's it. Um, for, you know, a little intro there. So besides the storm and all the things that have been going on, um, we had a, like I said, we had a really good piece, uh, written by Matt Lucas and I kind of wanted to mention it cause it's been getting some traction. So Vinny, I know you, uh, we chimed in on that too a little bit, but, uh, if you haven't read it, it's about Yokao. Uh, you know, we don't want to shit on Yokao. You know, it's just something that happened. And, uh, but yeah, obviously the, uh, the article speaks for itself and uh, it's kind of crazy what happened. So like Vinny, what do you think? <laughs> I think that, um, well, what Eric is not going to say because, you know, he tries to be politically correct all the time. <laughs> was that the whole time the three of us, me, Eric and Matt Lucas were talking about the article and everything. The number one thing that was being thrown around was hashtag fuck yo cow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Because, you know, you're a piece of shit, so you, you know, by, by your actions. And as a business owner, that is no way to run a business. So, hashtag fuck YoCal. <laughs> I will never support anything of them again. Um, and I hope well, you guys don't either. And that's, uh, you know, pretty much what I have to say. Jeez, man. <laughs> I don't even know how to come back from that and try to, like, make it make it sound not politically not bad um i'm out of it a lot i'm, I'm out of loss for it, words it is. i mean <laughs> you're gonna the the action that was that was done the, the owner of yokao went into a shop and because he decided not to so he he had i guess you know what's what's gathered from the article and, and all the news reports is that he had a supplier who is um the guys the people who run the lumpini shop mm-hmm they made shorts for him years and years ago. He never picked them up. So what are they supposed to do? Just throw them out? No. Years later, they decided to fucking sell them and make some money back off of it. Because I'm sure they didn't pay for them. 
Because I'm sure if they paid for them, they would have picked them up. Yeah, I don't, well, I, I don't know. I that's what that the part. yeah the purchase receipts and everything from what we've got from Matt Lucas. He gathered his information really well when he wrote this article. So we just want to make sure you know this is this is all coming from from Matt. Matt is in Thailand and he interviews people and he does you know he does a good job of of, of writing his articles. He's not somebody who just throws shit out there. Yeah, no, so, they're all fa- all facts were checked. Yeah, so purchase receipts and everything show that um, you know basically the the Lumpini shop did exactly. That they produced the shorts for uh, Mr. Yakao, which is how he's been called, um, and um, they produced the shorts for him, and they never came and picked them up. Uh, they never paid for them. So yeah, so what Vinny said is true. They they put them on sale because they said, you know, we got to recoup the money that we've, you know, we've uh, we we invested in making these shorts, and we haven't you know received anything for them. So they decided to sell them. Um, which is totally legitimate. And uh, what was it like? I think it was something like five or six years ago that uh, Mr. Yakao had ordered these shorts. So they hadn't received money for five or six years. I mean, shit. Knowing Vinny, he would have probably sold them after six months. <laughs> so, not even. Not even. So, um, uh, yeah. So they did. They actually, you know, kind of did – they did a, did him a big favor trying to wait on him and keep and supposedly keep calling him and everything and he never came and then finally he does come in when they start selling him and decides you know to come in and bully with like five or six guys and you know throw punches and throw shit at this guy's face and everything and yell at him which if you guys know anything about Thai culture you guys know anything about Thai culture the one thing that you do not do is this whole idea of losing face like if you yell at a Thai person like if you're in Thailand and you yell and you know you just like gesticulate and you're just like fucking going crazy and yelling at them the one that looks bad is you you know that is that's the way they see it and they're not going to help you out um but they're also not going to be like you know they're not going to be like here in the states where they're going to be like fuck you and and you know it's going to be a fight and they're going to take you out to the parking lot they don't do that so this guy did that, and it's it's kind of funny because it's like, you know, if you look, if you guys, I mean, obviously, I got, you, I want you guys to read the article, and we're telling you the facts, but obviously, we want to talk about it here on the podcast as well. So, this guy did that, goes into the shop, goes into the Lupini shop, strong arms the owner, all this type of stuff. Uh, apparently, you know, the one thing he didn't think about was this guy is the guy, the owner of the Lupini shop, is married to. Like, let's say, like a Whitney Houston of Thailand. You know, she's a very well known pop star, pop singer. So he didn't know that. And now, these, now that, you know, pop, that, that pop singer, she used her celebrity to go out, uh, create obviously a press conference where, you know, they can tell their side of the story. And now this guy's, I mean, it's pretty fucked because, I mean, as a foreigner, as a foreigner anywhere, you're not going to go and like fuck with the locals and then expect that, you know, they're going to, everyone everyone's gonna be cool with you you know and especially in thailand like thais thais are very proud of their country you know they're very nationalistic um you know but they're they're kind people but you know like if you're gonna go in there and and, and strong arm somebody don't expect them to not kick back and in this case they had the the guy had the uh, celebrity wife to do so so um it's it's gone viral the video you guys can check it out like i said on on strikingcorner.com we have the uh the article with the video and the and the uh the news report talking about it. Obviously it's in Thai, but with the video, you can just see what's going on and, and you know what this guy was doing and you know, just how he was yelling at the guy. So it's, it's bullshit, man. And, and then, so a lot of thing that a lot of stuff also came out afterwards, a lot of people came forward talking about how they've already dealt with this guy from Yawkel on multiple occasions, uh, having things where he would, you know, not a, either threaten or not pay a lot of different things like that. So, and we've heard stories. Like, I want to be real. Like, I've heard stories of Yakal from good friends of ours, um, from good friends of ours, even from, you know, Vinny at one point tried to do some business. Um, so there's, there's been a couple things. But, you know, I didn't, I didn't know, to be honest with you, I didn't know it was to that extent until this all came out. And when this all came out, it was like, at first you're like, oh, these guys just suck. You know, they're just not good at doing business. Um but then you, when it goes further and you're like, oh, when these guys are actually like going into people and intimidating, going, going into shops, intimidating people, throwing punches, it's already like, all right, these guys are just fucking idiots, you know, and just an asshole. The guy's just an asshole and that's his way of doing things. So um, I wouldn't say hashtag fuck Yakal, but that's that's what Vinny already said. So It's already been said. It's already been said. You can't take it back. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to, I also wanted to point out that uh, the owner of Yakal is Italian. And, uh, 
I knew Vin- you were going to say something stupid about that. <laughs> and then Vinny is Italian. So I think it goes hand in hand. You know, like I think there's there's also an issue here where we got to realize that Italians are just hot headed and kind of shitty people, man. <laughs> uh, Listen, they're not all like that. <laughs> they're not all like that. Vinny's a kind individual. Um, not an asshole at all. If there's one, if there's one bad egg in the dozen, you're gonna throw the whole dozen out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how. That's I what know. I do all the time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Stereotype all the time. No, no, but uh, no. And even uh, in the in the article so as well. If you really want to get into stereotyping, then obviously you sell cocaine. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. I knew it was something going to yeah. be about narcos and narco season three came out and how I didn't even like, like f- fucking Pablo, watched it like yet. You're like fourth cousin or something. <laughs> yeah. We're all related to him. All Colombians are related to Pablo Escobar. Yeah. Uh, so you obviously sell cocaine <laughs> and you're just an asshole Italian guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you always gesture with your hands, you know, you're involved with the mob, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, if you guys want to read more about it, obviously it's been it's been shared. Uh, you know, I want to shout out to Matt Lucas. He's been a friend of the podcast. We've had him on the show. Wrote a great book called uh, the the Boxer's Soliloquy. I think I have it right here. Um, great stuff. So you know, he he wrote a good wrote a good story and tried to you know basically dot the i's and cross the t's and and uh, talk to a lot of people. And from what he's told us, uh, there were a lot of people that did come forward. So he had actually um, not mentioned all the different people that came forward. I mean, he only had so much space to, to write an article. So there was a lot of people that came forward and he actually minimized the amount of people, minimized all the interviews. Like he cut out a lot of, of, of other people that he had already talked to had had issues. And I've heard it on social media. I mean, the, uh, the, everybody that shared it has kind of been like not surprised by it. So, I mean, they might be flashy shorts. They put on good events and things like that or whatever, but, and you, you know, they, Everybody, you know, they have Sanchai, and this is not to talk about their fighters because I'm I'm not sure if their fighters obviously are fighters are going to want sponsors. So if they're going to throw them money, then they're gonna they're gonna fight for them. So you know, it's not like we're going to shit on Sanchai or all the other guys that are involved with them, you know. But um, but now it's like brought to light that the the owners are doing some pretty shitty stuff. So you know. Uh, I think it's uh, <clears throat> it's 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 only right when people are doing crappy business practices that they be called out, and especially in this day and age, you should be pretty smart to know that with social media and everything that there is available, that if you do some fucked up shit, it's easy for people to lash out now. You now there's no like customer service line that people can call and complain. It's like they can really fuck up your shit via social media and everything, and uh, and and they've been doing that. They've been going viral with it, and in Thailand, it's a big story. So. Uh, you know, I just wanted to mention that cause that, that was, that was one of the biggest pieces of news that came out and, uh, yeah, I've actually, I, I've never used any of their stuff anyway, but from what I've heard, yeah. it's mostly shit. <laughs> I mean, no, like I, I've heard like most people that give reviews on Yoka, like they say it just like falls apart. Like it's yeah. not really that good. It's like, it used to be good, which, um, you know, through the grapevine, I've heard that when Yoka first started, they were using Raja's factory. Mm-hmm. And obviously, Raja has pretty good quality stuff. So back then, it was good. But then, when they started opening, when they opened up their own factory and were producing their own shit, then uh, just wasn't as good a quality. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, they've kind of, I guess they, you know, whatever it is, management, they went off the rails in the way they've done things. Probably not run correctly. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, obviously, who knows what's going to happen with the rest of the story? We'll keep in, you know, keep in touch with the, uh, you know with our guys out there and see what's going on. And I mean, they can, I don't know if they, how they can better, you know, the things now. I mean, they're going to have to step up eventually. They've been pretty silent. Um, I know they've threatened people before they've threatened people who've given them bad reviews. Um, we wrote, I mean, sorry, Matt Lucas wrote that article. We haven't received anything from them telling us to fuck off yet. So I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I, I kind of, does. <laughs> I kind of have a feeling that it will, um, that we will get there. And, and like I said, we're not trying to shit on any brands for any other reason. It's not like we have a brand to sell of like pads and stuff like that. We, we've just made t-shirts, you know? So it's not like really in, in our interest to fuck with a brand, but I, it's just, you know, you, 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 you hear something that's kind of shitty and, uh, we're all trying to do good things in the Muay Thai community and the Muay Thai community is so tight knit that if you fuck up, you fuck up. And, yeah, it's uh, just in our interest to weed out the douchebags from the Muay Thai community. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's I all mean, we're here for. 
Yeah, I guess I guess there is that Muay Thai snobbery because we did the same shit with nine rounds. <laughs> um, I, no, I, I didn't do that with nine rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't My, think. I mean, I don't. And, and to to be fair, we talked about that at one point too. It was uh, we talked about it with Lonnie and a lot of people. Like nine rounds does their business, and it was really about staying in your lane. And really, it was one franchise owner that started like hashtagging Muay Thai and all this stuff with like really just really shitty uh, training methods. And it's like, dude, you're going to hashtag Muay Thai and like real fighter or whatever. And th- you're not really doing, you know, Muay Thai. So you're really going to piss off the people that really do invest time and have invested a lot of years into perfecting and making sure Muay Thai grows right. And people are teaching it correctly. And you're going to hashtag some really shitty training video with Muay Thai. Like if you're going to say you're kickboxing fitness, great, man. There's kickboxing fitness everywhere. It's not a bad thing. If you're trying to stay in shape, if that's what you want to do, great. And I think Vinny said it a hundred times. Like if you just stay in your lane, stay in your lane. That's what you do. You know, be who you are. You're yeah. a multi-million dollar company. Yeah. Be who you are, you know? And, I, and, and, and so in that end with the whole nine rounds thing, it was, it's kind of like, you know, just, uh, well, we don't have to get back into no, it. No, no, we don't have to get back into it, but it was just like one franchiser. So we, you know, but Muay Thai will, I'm just saying the Muay Thai community will call you out. So with this thing with Yakao, that is what happened, you know, and uh, a lot of people have, a lot of people have, uh, have echoed the sentiments, you know, so we'll see what happens. I don't know if they're going to, you know, they eventually come at us and say something. Who knows? Yeah, I hope they do. Vinny hopes they do. Because I do. Vinny's, because try that I, fucking I, I, that that roided out strong arm shit with me. It ain't gonna work. <laughs> I always try to be politically correct, man. You're fucking up my show. No, <laughs> your show. What the fuck are you talking about? It's my show, man. No, politically sure. correct. <laughs> we don't do politically correct. <laughs> All right. So besides that, man. So speaking of politically correct, I do have a rant, and um. I know Vinny didn't watch it. Listen, guys, it's Sunday. Okay, what is it today? What day? What's the date? September seventeenth. That's when we're recording this. This will drop on Tuesday, September nineteenth. Okay. So, anyway, September seventeenth. Today's Sunday. We're recording this. It is one day after the biggest fight for me, at least. In recent boxing history, obviously, there's been a lot of great fights. Everybody was excited for Pacquiao Mayweather. That was a shit. I mean, it was a shit fight. I mean, you know, big names, shit fight happened years too late. I think, and I and and I saw it with a good friend of mine who is a total boxing fanatic, uh, with a lot of friends that are boxing fanatics. I told Vinny to watch it, but he decided to watch Pirates of the Caribbean. Um. But I love him for it because that's what he does. Hashtag priorities. <laughs> hashtag priorities. So, <laughs> did you watch it? Because so many hashtags today. Did you, you watch? Did you do that because what was it? Because you wanted to watch it with the kid, with your daughter. What, what was it? Um, I just really wanted to watch it, and there was finally like a really good feed on Cody. Like I just, I redid my Cody last week, and uh-huh. I wanted to watch a movie on it. So. That was the one at the top of the list, so I watched it, and I actually completely forgot about the fight because, you know, I'm not a gigantic boxing fan, and plus, I wasn't going to pay a hundred dollars to see it, and I was not in the mood to go anywhere to watch it. So, well, this wasn't this wasn't McGregor Mayweather, dude. It was seventy nine ninety nine. Oh well, whatever. I'm still not going to pay eighty dollars <laughs> to watch boxing when it's you know only one fight there was of lit- somewhat interest, dude. The undercard was absolute garbage garbage and and every time i watch boxing i'm always sitting there with anticipation waiting for the kick or the elbow and it just never comes and i'm always disappointed (laughs) but there are a lot of i mean yeah i'm see i'm the boxing fan of the two i mean we really like i mean we're we're the striking corner we like all things striking i obviously love every all of them Vinny is very traditional muay thai kickboxing obviously not a huge mma fan um, I am not a huge MMA fan either, but I watch it. Um, but boxing, I, I, you know, the funny thing is when I started, when we started like training years ago, I wasn't even that big of a boxing fan either. Um, but, uh, I've gone into it, uh, late, um, for the last few years, I've actually been watching it and I've gone back and watched, you know, old fights as well. And then, and, and, you know, I started getting an appreciation for it in order to, you know, also teach people in, you know, when I, when I was coaching, you know, besides Muay Thai, you know, I, I always, cause I feel like when I was a fighter, when I was fighting, I always felt like my, um, like I never had good hands. That was always I, like my thing. 
I could vouch for that. Your hands yeah. kind of sucked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna answer that. I'm not gonna even give it because you're trolling right now, and that's just not you know. But but anyway, no. Um. So yeah, but I'm. But I'll say it too, dude. I I just was never. I have never been confident in my hands. Um. And so boxing was became something where I was like, you know, you you always kind of want to. If you if you have a weakness, you know you're gonna be like, okay, I want to focus on the weakness. So I started looking at a lot of boxing, and I was like, damn, you know, I wanna I wanna be able to throw hands like that with that type of confidence, you know. Where there's guys, there's a lot of guys like, I mean, Vinny Vinny has Vinny has strong hands. I mean, he's got good hands, and he, and he hits hard. Um, and 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 it's like I think Vinny, you you've always when you were fighting, you were always really confident in throwing your hands. So yeah. I was never confident in throwing my hands. I just I knew I had a good clinch. I knew I had good knees, good kick. I had a, like I have a strong left kick. I knew all that, you know. But I always would go into a fight, and there was always this little thing where if like hands started flying or I you know was trying to move in, I would second guess, you know. So that's never a good thing, you know. And so you want to improve on that. So I would start. I started watching boxing and all that type of stuff. So. Um, so anyway, that's that's what led me to obviously this was a huge fight last night, Gennady Golovkin versus Canelo Alvarez. Listen, to me, it was an awesome fight. It lived up to the hype. It lived up to what everybody wanted to see. After the Conor, Conor McGregor, you know, Mayweather fucking fiasco. I mean, I don't care. I know we, we might get hate about that, but I thought that was the biggest bullshit fight that ever happened. I, I didn't even bother fucking watching it or paying. I wasn't going to pay $100 for it. Everybody was trying to sell it as like the biggest thing in fucking sports history. It wasn't. You know, it wasn't. It fell flat, you know. Spare me all the fucking, you know, May uh, McGregor lasted 10 rounds with Mayweather. Mayweather's never been a fucking knockout artist, you know. Um, please, you know, he's he's also fucking, he's also 40, you know. He's not the same it, guy anymore. It doesn't even matter, though, because at the end of the day, they both won. Yeah, at the end of the day, they made millions, so that's great. But, but it's just like, I mean, the fight that really for boxing fans, for real, for fight fans, for striking fans, for people that really, really, I mean, for fucking snobs like myself, <laughs> that everybody really wanted to see was Gennady Golovkin, Canelo Alvarez, and it was a fucking awesome fight, guys. Great awesome. fight. Huh? Controversy in the judging, though, I heard. Of course, as always with boxing, man, and that's where I want to get to, is that it's ridiculous that such a great fight ended up ended up, you know, sh being being fucking just ruined by more shitty decision making. Like, and the funny thing is, I, okay, I was watching it with somebody who was a Canelo is a Canelo fan. Uh, I am not a Canelo hater, so I want to come out and say that I like both guys. I really like both guys, but I do favor Triple G. I like the fact that he's a knockout artist. You know that those hands when he lands them, he fucks dudes up. I love that. You know, it's, it's something that boxing obviously needs. But these are two guys that are heavy hitters, great fighters. I mean, both have knockout power. So it was going to be a great fight. But I was favoring Triple G. I like Canelo a lot. I think they're both great ambassadors for the sport. Um, so I was with a guy who was who was rooting for Canelo. I would say, you know, first first three rounds, first three rounds, once Cane when, when Canelo would looked faster, Triple G looked slower, looked faster, looked like he was able, you know, like he was landing he was landing shots, he was landing clean. I was like, oh shit, Canelo's gonna outbox Triple G and he's gonna win this fight on points. I didn't think he was gonna knock him out, but I think he would win that fight on points. I was believing that Canelo was gonna win. Then the fight turned. And then I felt that like Triple G ran away with it, was just the better fighter, the stronger fighter. Triple G had Canelo against the ropes most of the fight. Canelo was running away, not running away, but he was, you know, moving away from the, moving away, did not want to engage Gennady Golovkin in the slugfest, which is obviously not a good idea. Um, came alive in the last two rounds. Great. You know, great, great fight. It lived up to the hype. Both guys fought. Both guys showed a fucking ton of heart. And but it was it was for me and for everybody that I've seen out there, save a couple of couple of guys that I've read on social media. Everybody out there was like Triple G deserved to fucking win that fight. Easy. All right. I'm talking like uh, seven rounds. To, I would say no, I would say, yeah, seven rounds. What? Seven to six, seven to five. Was it? No. Yeah. Seven to five. You know, seven to five. I gave Triple G. I'm sorry, I gave Canelo the first three rounds, okay, and then gave him the last two. So that's five rounds, 
All right. So, I, you know, and then the rest was the rest was Golovkin. I don't know how the fuck. And then you know, at the end of the fight, somebody calls it one fifteen, one thirteen was one of the judges for Golovkin. That was the right call. It should have been that across the fucking board. How the hell does Adelaide Bird, fucking this this judge? It's just absolutely ridiculous. And you guys can go on social media. We're not like a huge fucking outlet, but hell, hey, you guys can go on social media, listen to, you know, I know a lot of people don't like Stephen A. Smart, you know, uh, but he said it, he said it well. But Teddy Atlas also always talks about the corruption in boxing. He said it well himself. This was absolute fucking travesty, man. Like, so you have Adelaide Bird calls it 118 to 110. She gave 10 fucking rounds to Canelo. No fucking way, dude. No way. That that is happening. No way. And if you saw it 10 rounds for Canelo, I don't know what the fuck you're looking at. And I'm sorry. if I mean, obviously, I said politically correct. But fuck that, dude. There's no way. You just don't. I, I just hate when they rob fighters. So you want to be politically correct when it's convenient for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's, 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 uh, that's how it is, man. I'm a liberal. Asshole. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> but no, I'm. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's just like, it was just fucking absolute bullshit. 118 to 110, give me a break. 115 to 113, good decision. Then 114, 114, calling it a fucking draw. No way, dude. No way. So they, the fight ends up a draw. Ridiculous. And it's all, we all know what it's for. To set up an eventual rematch because that's the fight everybody wants to see. But you should have at least gave the guy, okay, so if Golovkin wins, what the fuck happens? You could still say that fight was so good. People were going to tune in anyway for a fucking rematch. Even if, like, that's the thing. If you would have watched the fight, and Vin, I, you know, I invite you to go back and, and just catch it, you know, whenever you can catch it on a replay. Thanks um, for the end. Uh huh. Yeah. I invite you to do that. Uh, yes. We'll see if you do. Uh, but um, it's just catch the fight, check it out. It was a great fucking fight. If you would have given it to, if you would have given it to Golovkin, you could still sell the fucking rematch, man. You could still sell the rematch and at least save boxing another fucking black eye of being this corrupt fucking sport, you know. And this is the thing, man. And Vinny, I don't, I don't know if you're gonna echo this, but I want to say this. I want to say this. We've come to this point. I don't know what I think in the, in the U.S. and in like in combat sports, but I think it's indicative of our country where just money is every fucking thing dude and it runs everything and everything is done in the interest of money which is i understand i want to make fucking money Vinny wants to make money Vinny probably wants to make more money than i want to make money <laughs> <laughs> he's more of the business guy but i want to make money too you know and i know everybody does but fuck dude i i just don't believe in doing it it's like it's like with the yakow thing you make money, but I don't believe it. Making money fair, and sometimes, yeah, sometimes you're going to have to play hardball, and you're going to have to be cutthroat, and you don't want to get fucked over, and that's how you do business, because you want to come out to win, you know? But to be a fucking blatant cheater or blatant dickhead, like, let's say, with Yakao going strong-arm people, be unethical, fuck that, dude. That's not, I don't believe in doing that in the interest of money. And this is what I felt happened last night. It's like, it's all about selling the next fight, selling the rematch, calling it a draw, you know, so we can sell a rematch down the line, you know. And here's another thing, dude. It was run by by Golden Boy Promotions. Oscar De La Hoya running the show. Who is Oscar De La Hoya's fighter? Canelo Alvarez, right? Canelo Alvarez is his fighter. So, I mean, it's just so so much bullshit, dude. Like, it was like, okay, you know, and the funny thing is, like I said, I was watching the fight with a Canelo Alvarez fan. He turned, obviously, he was like, no, Triple G is running away with this fight. Easily, it's going to be Triple G decision. But even he told me, when we when we got to, like, the 11th, 10th or 11th round, he was, like, telling me, they're going to steal this fight from, they're going to steal this fight from Golovkin. I hope they don't take it from Golovkin. They're going to steal it from him. They're going to steal it from him. How bad is boxing corruption? That we already expect those fucking decisions to happen. How bad is it that 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 still that that happens? We expect people to get fucking robbed. Like the people were already like they are going to take this fight from Golovkin if he doesn't knock out fucking uh, Canelo Alvarez. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, man. And anyway, that's that's my rant. I mean, you guys can. I mean, it was it was just to me it was a, a blatant robbery. Um, you can talk all this shit about people not knowing stuff about boxing. Please, people know shit about fighting. 
And that was easily, easy. I mean, easily, you are able to see that Golovkin won that fucking fight, man. Okay? And it shouldn't have been a draw. You know, it should have been, be fair, give it to the guy who deserved it. The fight was so good that you can resell a rematch easy. They're the two biggest fucking stars in the sport right now. Everybody loves those two guys. They're great ambassadors for the sport. They show that boxing isn't dead. Everybody loves that shit. They can easily have a rematch. But to do this shit is like, you just you just keep on giving the haters, because like that's what came out for me. Like The boxing haters came out in droves for the fucking McGregor-Mayweather fight. Boxing is shit. They can't handle McGregor. You know, Mayweather can't handle McGregor's power. All this shit. You know, at first it was McGregor's going to knock him out in in three three rounds. He's going to knock him the fuck out. Yeah, he's going to knock out Mayweather when nobody else has been able to do that fucking shit. Right? So so you think McGregor's going to knock him out? Please. Then, then he loses the fight. And all the MMA guys, a lot of these uneducated, I'm sorry, not all MMA guys, uneducated MMA fans come out and say, he lasted 10 rounds with Mayweather. Dude, ten, ten, he lasted 10 rounds with Mayweather? He sh- Why are you celebrating the fact that he lost? He lost, man. Okay, he did a pretty good job. I'm sorry, but Mayweather let him do that. Okay? Anyway, it's just, it's just that wasn't the fight that everybody was looking forward to. This was the fight that everybody was looking forward to. This one really showed who the two best guys are. This was the one that we everybody wanted to see. And this one could have saved boxing if they would have done, not saved it, but I mean, at least get it a better reputation if they would have done the correct thing. If they would have done the correct thing and given the fight to the, to the, the guy who deserved the fucking win. Anyway, that's that's my thing. I, I don't know, Vin. What do, what do you think about that shit? What do you think about shitty decisions? Shitty decisions? Yeah. They're they're pretty shitty. Yeah, I mean... What else is there to say about it? Yeah, it's, no, and, and this listen, is... Okay, let's... let's the, there's no such thing, in my opinion, of I, – I don't know what the words I'm looking for is. I think every single judge or would, has, has an interest in something. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a such thing as a neutral judge. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I think it's the way the, the professional landscape of sports is, is that we, we've already discussed this you know, ad nauseum on this show. We've discussed it and said, hey, you know, there's a problem with judging. Because why? Because these 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 judges, okay, so they might the boxing judges might be boxing judges, and they they have experience in boxing, and so we're saying why do they why do they judge Muay Thai or why do they judge MMA? That's what that's what's causing the problem. But then you also have the other problem is that, like Vinny says, they have a vested interest in something going on behind the scenes. Like we talk about the NSEC, a lot of these a lot of these athletic boards, these judges are like friends of the fucking governor or friends of like whoever's running the board and they just bring on these assholes to fucking judge fights. Like these people that have no business judging fights. It's like, you know, I mean, you know, when 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 an elected official like let's say when when a president takes takes uh takes office, he gives his buddies or people that, you know, supported him, he give we all know that they give him cushy jobs like uh, like ambassador positions, you know, if you want to be like ambassador in Paris, you know, if you're a good friend of the president, once the new president comes in, he's going to give you the ambassador position in, in Paris or, or in, uh, or in Berlin or in Europe where, you know, people want to live there. Um, you know, the, the real, real hardcore politicians, I mean, I don't want to get into politics, but the real, real hardcore politicians, um, go to the real serious areas you know, where there's issues with those countries. So they're ambassadors to, let's say, Pakistan or to, you know, the countries where where they really need somebody that is well-versed in foreign relations, right? That happens uh, at the political level. So the same thing is going to fucking happen at the the level of um, these commissions, these boxing commissions. Vinny gets voted as the boxing commissioner. Hey, Eric, why don't you be a judge? You're my boy. That fucking happens, dude. That happens all the time. And that's what's happening in the sport. And then with boxing, that's what's happening because they want the money. They want the money. They want to sell this fight again. So what do they say? Okay, let's uh, let's give it 118, 110 for Canelo, 114, 114 as a draw. And then to be fair, let's give it 115, 113, which is the real score to Golovkin so we can save, say at least one judge had his fucking glasses on. That's it, you know? And we save a little bit of face, but everybody knows that you guys are scumbags, you know? So 
That's that's my opinion on that. And it's not to say that there's not shitty decisions in Muay Thai. We've seen plenty um, when it comes to the, uh, you know, in lion fight or, you know, in, in other in other sport, in other uh, events, MMA has pl- has had plenty of shitty decisions, but at least like. And I mean, I don't, I'm not a Dana White fan, but at least Dana White comes out and says that was a fucking bullshit decision, he, you know, but he doesn't control a lot of times the judges that judge, you know, he doesn't control them because they're in, in like Nevada or in California. Those are, those are appointed judges. So he's like, what, the, what fight were they fucking watching? You know? And the same thing happens with, with Muay Thai. We have boxing judges or karate fucking judges that'll score these fights. And you're like, what the fuck are you watching, dude? So it happens. Well, some sometimes on you know, obviously compared to boxing and MMA, Muay Thai, <laughs> kickboxing is on the lower end of things. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to the the lower end of sports, you obviously have certain things that do drive judging, which are, you know, maybe for example, ticket sales. Yeah. Decide who wins the fight sometimes. So there's a lot of you know bullshit involved everywhere. Yeah, you know, and and, uh, and also like you know. Speaking of that, which you, you brought up that good point, the ticket sales and those type of things. Um, you know, uh, I know you've listened to Eric A. Craft's podcast. We really like it. Check it out. Um, was it like real? Keeping it real with Eric A. Craft. He's done like five episodes or so. Um, <clears throat> and he, he does a good job about that too. And it's, it's, it's really that that's thing. There's, there's all these other little incentives um, or these little things like these X factors that are pulling the strings for really who's going to win. Like he's saying, like, like, let's say, you know, I'm giving you an example. Like, Vinny, Vinny could be a badass fighter, you know, and Vinny was, you know, a talented fucking fighter when he was fighting. Could go to, let's say, Vinny's from, Vinny's from New York. He's from Brooklyn. But let's say there was no fights in Brooklyn. So he goes to Philly to go fight in Philadelphia. Fight the hometown guy. The hometown guy sells the fucking tickets. Vinny beats the fuck out of the hometown guy, right? Beats the fuck out of him. And this is the one thing that, that, that Eric Haycraft was saying, which I think is correct. Billy, Vinny beats the fuck out of that guy. But even though he beat the fuck out of the guy, Vinny's not going to be invited back to, to fight that guy and be able to continue protecting those things. Because Vinny doesn't sell tickets in Philly. You know what I mean? So they're going to they're gonna keep putting on the guy that Vinny just beat the fuck out of. He's going to be the ones getting the opportunities in Philly because he's the guy who sells the tickets in Philly, dude. You know, that's just the way it is. And that's kind of what that happens, you know, with a lot of times with Lion Fight, with the with the Vegas shows. And that's not shitting on Lion Fight. It's just the way the, the, the combat landscape is kind of at the moment, you know. Um, Lion Fight has to do that with Vegas. They got, a, they, they got the hometown guys. They have to fly in some of the other guys. But they're not going to fly you in unless, number one, you are a draw or they feel like maybe the local guy can take it. I mean, that's kind of how it is, you know, like – that that is what's happening in the sport and that's kind of why it doesn't grow with what we want to see how we want to see it grow because there is that other interest is that we have to make money off of these guys to make money to recoup what we're investing in this event so it's like like going back to the thing of 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 going back to the 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 example of Vinny fighting in Philly if he knocks out the hometown guy dude that's great for Vinny he knocked out the hometown guy but the hometown guys can still get all the opportunities in Philadelphia because Vinny's not from Philadelphia. No one gives a fuck about seeing him again, you know, even if he's good, you know, that's just the way things are. So I think that's the problem with our sport. But when it comes to something as big as boxing, like as big as the fight that happened last night, it's just like, I mean, just be fucking fair, man. Like in combat sports, that's the problem. There's just... We, we all talk about martial arts and, you know, about this honor system that we all have. And 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 I try to keep it, you know, I, that's why I sometimes I'm politically correct and don't like to talk shit because I want everybody to be friends. I want to be nice, you know, and all that type of stuff. And then Lonnie, you know, has has even mentioned it, you know, like if I want to if I want to make everybody happy, I should just fucking sell ice cream because this isn't the way to do it. You know, combat sports, you're not going to make everybody happy. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys might disagree with everything I said you know, or might disagree sometimes with Vinny's point of view or my point of view or whatever. Um, and I think sometimes we, 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 we try to be liked, but that's not going to fucking cut it, you know? And, uh, I, I mean, I don't really try cause I don't really care. No, no, I know. And, 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 and that's why it's a good mix. Cause I try to be the politically correct one. Vinny wants to not stir up controversy, but he just wants to tell it like it is. 
And no, I, I listen. I, I have. I always say I don't. I don't have much of a filter, so I say what's on my mind. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. you don't agree with me, then I welcome an educated discussion, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not just douchebaggery of a, you know, unfact checked conversation. I don't even know if that, those are real words. Yeah, you know, but anyway, for real, for real. Yeah. So oh. that's 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 just how I am. So yeah. And the thing if is, you is, don't it, agree with what I say, then. Yeah, and we know. we live in a day and age. We live in a day and age where you're gonna get for every one educated comment, you're gonna get like fifty just fucking hater comments. You know, and that's with everything, dude. I mean, that's with everything. I'm pretty sure there's people like I, I see people. I'm like, you know, for the fight, let's say for the fight that happened this weekend on Sunday. I mean, on Saturday, it's just like if you like Canelo, that's great. And, and I mean, like I said, I was with a guy who was a, is a Canelo fan and he said, Golovkin took it. And if you're a Canelo fan and you're saying, ah, dude, Canelo won, Canelo won that fight. Canelo won that fight. I just don't know what to tell you, man. I mean, I just think you're being biased. You're being biased because Golovkin won that fight. And let's be fair. Give the guy, the guy who deserves it, deserves it as much as you I'd like, dude, I, I don't like fucking, there's a lot of fighters I don't like and they win. Like I'm not a McGregor fan, you know? You know, and, and there's plenty of people that are fucking huge McGregor fans. I'm not a McGregor fan. I hate it when he fucking wins. You know? I just don't like the shit talking and stuff like that. But the guy backs it up. And so I'm not going to sit there and if there's a close fight and say, oh, dude, he lost that fight. You know? No, man. I try to be fucking fair, dude. You know, like, if he won the fight, he won the fucking fight, dude. As much as I don't like the guy, he won the fucking fight. And, then, and we see that. And I, and, and I think people that... That needs to resonate and everybody and all these fucking judges and bullshit like that and promotions. It's like, dude, give the everybody the fair fucking outcome, man. You know, close fights are close fights. Like if we're talking about a close fight, like, oh shit, it's up in the air. I understand that it can go either way. You know, and then people are gonna get mad because like once again, we can go back to you can't make everybody happy. So there's a close fight where I mean Vinny and I have been have watched line fights together where we're like, dude, I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna go. And when they score it, you know, some people are going to get mad, but, you know, Vinny and I have been like, you know, we've said to each other, ah, I could see how that can go that way. You know, there's, there's like a, there's like a legitimate, a legitimate reason because it was such a close fight. You can say, dude, it was such a close fight. It really could have gone either way, you know, but when it's so, I mean, to, that's why going back to that whole 118, 110, 118, 110 is giving Canelo 10 rounds. When you're giving Canelo 10 rounds in a 12 round fight, that is a lopsided fucking decision, right? Lopsided in favor of Canelo, who is the guy that everybody knows, or at least the majority of people know, did not win that fight. And even us Golovkin fans, I would tell you, even Golovkin fans, if they gave Golovkin 118 to 110, I'd be like, that's bullshit. There's no way Golovkin did not win 10 rounds, you know, be fair, dude. You get people, people need to like take off the, their biased, you know, their, their biases and just fucking look at the fights correctly, you know? And, and I just, I feel, I mean, it's, it's hard to do that because everyone's going to have a favorite. Everyone's going to have a dog in the fight, whatever. Um, it's hard to do that, but, but you know, I just, I just, maybe I'm the, I, you know, I try to be fair with people, man. If the guy wins, guy wins, man. As much as I might not like him, just, but you know, give them, they, 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 these guys work hard, you know, these guys work hard and now I'm going, you know, obviously these dudes are going to make millions of dollars regardless. So, you know, they walk away winners no matter what, but you know, it goes back to the whole judging in regular fights. Like when you get a shitty decision in a fight, when like, let's say, you know, Vinny that has fighters or I have that fighters and you walk away with a really shit decision because it's hometown, like a hometown guy and your guy beat him. But since he's the home, the other guy is the hometown guy. They give the other guy the decision. It's, it's bullshit, you know, because people work so hard and we invest so much fucking time into the training that that is just completely unfair to do that because you are really making that hard work mean nothing, you know? And that's, that's where I take an issue with, and the same thing. I mean, I think Golovkin, uh, like, even with these big fights, I mean, even if they're both guys are making f- a shitload of money, it's still like, come on, man. Like, you know, you, what are you showing? For me, it's all about too. also the being fair in a fight is also and in, in, in combat sports or in any sport really <clears throat> is 
we always say this, you know, there's, there's kids watching, there's people watching, you know, um, and what are we really saying about society? If we're saying, you know, money is the, the number one thing, it's not, <clears throat> we don't even have to be fair anymore. You know, it's just like, ah, it's okay. Give it to the guy. Let's call it a draw when it really wasn't a draw because we're all going to make money and that's what makes everybody happy. And now everybody falls in line with that type of thinking now. It's like, ah, it's okay because everyone made money. Dude, it's not okay. Nah, that's just, that's that's my thinking. I don't know. I've been on a rant for enough. But. I don't know, Vin. Am I wrong? What? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Yeah. Like, am I... Am I off my out of, am I out of my mind for saying all this shit? Or I stopped listening like ten minutes ago because <laughs> it seemed to me like you just kept repeating yourself. Yeah, I probably, I probably did. <laughs> I probably did because it was I was just hey, so passionate about it. Listen, it's it's your opinion, so you can't be wrong. It's an opinion. Yeah, yeah. But I I, I don't know, man. I, is it wrong? I think is it like here's a question: Is it wrong that I look for every? I mean, like, I guess it is. Is it wrong that I look for everything to be fair? Because life isn't fucking fair. Yeah. Stop being so liberal. <laughs> oh, no, man. I mean, I, I, no, I understand, dude. I, I understand the interest of business and the fucking money and they want to do this. You know, they want to, you know, I understand that there's, there's money to be made. List. Well, I've talked about it for Muay Thai before and, and Vinny and I have talked about it as well. The reason that they took the, some, some, some promotions don't use the Muay Thai music anymore and that we're not trying to stay super traditional for Muay Thai. Why? Because, We've said you can't sell a culture, an entire culture of Thai boxing to a country that is not Thai, you know? So if we want to grow the sport, we can't expect that everyone's going to do Y and the Y crew and understand the Prajads and the Mong Kons and, you know, listen to the music and be okay with it. Some people find that music fucking annoying and I can see it, you know? So to sell it, to make sure that our sport grows in America, we have to, we have to make some sacrifices, right? I understand that, but I, I don't know. I, you know, I understand, but I also believe in being fair when it comes to like judging these things and, uh, you know, in, in, in officiating and refing. In, in a perfect world, that shit would be fair. Yeah, but, but it's, it's not. It's not a perfect world. I know so. it's not a perfect world, but why is it that the, why is it that, it's like you would think that, okay, you would think, this is, this is my argument, you would think that the one-off is fine. You know, the one-off where somebody, where a judge made a shitty decision. There's a one-off where you're like, ah, that was a bad decision. But that, there's been so many good decisions lately that, that it, I don't really take issue with that one. You know, somebody makes mistakes. But for it to happen as much as it fucking does, dude, like I said, to where everyone is expecting they're going to steal this fight from Golovkin, like, I had people already saying, they're going to steal this fight from Golovkin if Golovkin doesn't knock out Canelo. Like, to where we already expect corruption? Ah, come on, man. Well, because when it happens over and over and over <sighs> again, obviously, you know, people notice the pattern, so they're expecting it. Yeah, man. And and that's just shitty. I just, it's it's crap, dude. It shouldn't, but I guess, I mean, that's that's the world we live in. It's fucking imperfect and crap, dude. Stop <laughs> crying. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <clears throat> All right, I'm I'm enough. I'm enough. I'm, I'm my voice is is running out, and and I'm just I'm just passionate, man. I you, I really love combat sports. I really want them to grow. I don't want boxing to die. I and you know this is the thing with with the whole McGregor and Mayweather fight. Like so many haters came out from both sides. Like but you know boxing fans talking shit about MMA, and then MMA fans talking shit about boxing. And it's like, you know, you have sometimes guys that are, we've talked about it too, like Muay Thai purists that'll shit on other sports or shit on kickboxing. It's like, come on, guys. You can be a fan of all of them. You know, you can be an MMA fan and be a boxing fan and a Muay Thai fan. And this is like one of my favorite, I think Vinny always says, like, stay in your lane and be who you are. Be who you are. You know, if you're an MMA fan, you're an MMA fan. There's no reason for you to go out and because you're an MMA fan, say, boxing is shit or kickboxing is shit just let it be that's that's it's a different sport you know and it's like you don't have to hate on something you don't have to hate on it simply because it's not your cup of tea you know so um that's what happened with the for me with the mcgregor and mayweather everybody came out and said you dude you can be fans of, of both things and then just have a you know have a, a an actual correct perspective on the outcome of the fight 
and not be so biased in one direction that you got to say, yeah, 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 no, uh, you know, oh, McGregor lost, but that's uh, boxing is shit, you know, dude, come on, man, you know, or May- Mayweather won, so that proves that MMA is garbage. Two, two totally different sports, you know, totally different sports. In MMA or Muay Thai and kickboxing, they're totally different sports, you know, but we can enjoy them all without having a problem with the other. Um, that's my Mr. Rogers moment for the day. Be happy with each other, you know, <laughs> be nice to your neighbor. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Am I really that liberal, dude? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> All right. Upsetting. What happened? I said it's it's quite upsetting. Oh my god, uh, the conservative of the bunch <clears throat> goes back to why the fuck are we friends? <laughs> All right, because I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why. You're the yin to my yang. Yeah, right. I am the counterpoint. <laughs> anyway. Uh, all right. So, all right, guys. So that was today's show. Um, or this week's show or whatever. Um, I just really wanted to talk about that. You know, guys, sound off on the comment section. You know, hit us up. Throw you can you can throw negative shit our way, good shit our way. It doesn't matter. We just want to grow the conversation. Combat sports is great. Whether 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 it's MMA, Muay Thai, kickboxing, whatever. We love it all. I love it all. Um, Vinny loves it all, except when Pirates of Caribbean is on. And I don't love it all. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> That's true. Oh, so speaking of which, changing subjects here. Vinny, I saw that Narco Season 3 came out. Have you started watching it yet? Um, I'm really not very interested anymore. Because Pablo's gone? Yeah, Pablo's dead. So, is that all that mattered to you? Yep. (laughs) Pablo's dead. Oh, man. So you haven't seen it, the new one? I, I watched the first episode. Yeah. And I just, uh, I don't know, I, was, I just wasn't into it. Ah, oh, man. Well, that sucks. I haven't seen any of the episodes, but, yeah. Well, you're an even bigger asshole. <laughs> but Pablo's dead. I don't know. I, it's just the, sh- the, the show was about Pablo. That's how it started. And now because it did so well, mm-hmm. They're, mm-hmm. they figured out how to keep it going. It's like, I don't know. I'm just over it. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I guess the, I mean, the Cali cartel isn't as interesting as the Medellin cartel. No. Yeah. <laughs> like, Pablo went in there and he just like fucked shit up. Well, because the other guys were more, me being from Colombia, the other guys were more of the businessman and they, they you know, they weren't as blood. Th- well, I mean, they're all bloodthirsty, but um, just Pablo was a larger than life character. I mean, obviously pa- he's going to steal. Pablo was like, you know, the, exactly what you said, larger than life. He was loud. He was public. He was, you know, he was big and he... he just the way he did things, and and uh, the Cali cartel is more like on the low, quiet, keep things quiet, and that doesn't make for good TV. Yeah, for yeah, me yeah. anyway. No, 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 and I understand it. I, I think they were trying to extend it because because it did so well, but you can't do that because I mean, and and this is coming from a Colombian. Listen, and this is this is the thing. I mean, we'll we'll end it here. It's TV talk, but uh. I always like the reason I don't watch Narcos and I always bring this up to Vinny is because I feel like, you know, there's been so much for, for Colombian people, there has been a lot of, you know, almost to a point where people like, like, and I've told you this before, like some people feel like it's celebrating a guy who was a villain, you know, now, although Narcos, you said, did a good job in showing that he was not this good guy, but obviously he's this larger than life guy because he took on the system and he just wanted all the money and the power and the respect. And just, he was bloodthirsty about getting it. So he's one of those guys that is such a bad dude that, and, but at the same time has other qualities that make him sort of a funny character because I mean, at the same time, Colombia was at that time also full of corruption. So you can't say, you know, the government are good guys because they weren't, you know, but uh, at the same time, and so this guy rises up and he's just a piece of shit too, but it's a piece of shit among another bunch of pieces of shit, you know? So, and he was just a loud guy and the crazy one and the one that besides being loud and crazy, he was also, you know, throwing money left and right and everybody kind of, you know, uh, there's there's some sort of Robin Hood-esque allure to that. I mean, in some sectors in Colombia, he is like a Robin Hood, you know, that he did so much for the poor, you know, but that was really to hide all the bad shit he was doing, you know? So- 
there is there is that and so there's that thing that's kind of one of the reasons i don't watch it although i've watched it and and the thing is it's also because i know the story it's something close to my culture but um but yeah i, I think i think that's kind of why it's going to go why don't you stop being a dick and be honest why, why you it? don't watch the show why don't i watch it because the main guy who plays pablo is not even colombian and he speaks shitty Spanish. Your words exactly. Did so I say that? Honest. Did I say yeah. that? Yeah. What What do I keep saying? Be what you are. <laughs> That's what you said. Own up to it, motherfucker. <laughs> well, I mean, That's I just I don't. No reason you don't watch it. No, that's not the only reason I don't watch it because I, dude, there was another version of the one, and they made it in Colombia. There was another version, and I didn't watch it either. And the guy was awesome who played Pablo, um, but I still didn't watch it. I mean, it was a good show. But I, I don't know. It's just not interesting. But yeah, but with the fact that they, I mean, and this guy, the guy they used for in Narcos for Pablo, he's a good actor, but he's a Brazilian dude. He spoke with a fucking Brazilian accent, dude. <laughs> like he had a Portuguese accent when he spoke Spanish for people that know Spanish. It just sounded that way, dude. I don't know. So yeah, I can be kind of a dick and a snob in that end, but that wasn't the only reason I say no to it. I don't watch Game of Thrones either, man. Oh, don't even get me started with that. <laughs> I watch Game of Thrones either. People hate it's just it. a piece of shit. It, it's for not that, that. It's not that big of a deal, man. <laughs> the it's show isn't that. For all you Game of Thrones watchers out there saying, "Ah, it's the greatest show that's ever existed," bro, it's not. It's not the greatest show that ever existed. It's okay. How would you, know you, you never watched. I saw it. the first season. It was all right, man. <laughs> Just go kill yourself. Or, or I saw the first and like a little bit of the second season. It's all right. It's good. It's good. I just, I don't know, man. I, I like. Why you didn't watch any of it? I, I did it. I just, I just like to play FIFA, bro. That's, that's, that's more of a, in my wheelhouse. Although I deleted it now, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it made you an asshole. <laughs> did absolutely nothing you were supposed to do except play FIFA. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's uh, yeah. I mean, we've talked uh, we've talked enough, but um, that's it for this show for this week. Um, so in 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 closing, thank you for listening to the Striking Corner. You guys can always check us out at strikingcorner.com, which is our main website. Remember what I uh, said at the early part of the show. If you you know if uh, you weren't listening, we are looking for writers to help us with content and writing interesting articles about Muay Thai. Like I said, it is a volunteer job. If you're looking to get some writing credits or something for school or you're just interested in writing about Muay Thai and have an outlet for your writing, hey guys, hit us up, info at strikingcorner.com. Besides that, you can also find us always on social media. Instagram is our biggest and our favorite, really, social media outlet where we're posting a lot of stuff. So check us out on Instagram at Striking Corner. Also on Twitter at Striking Corner. We are on also on, we are on Facebook as well at facebook.com forward slash striking corner. You can contact me directly at Eric at striking corner.com. That is my email address. My personal Instagram, if you guys want to check me out there, I don't have any problem. Uh, we can be friends. Follow me. Uh, I'm at Eric Rivera underscore TSC. Vinny. How are you on your quest to get 10,000 fans? Tell them about it. Nobody's helping. <laughs> no one is helping. But I am still on that quest. So <laughs> if you would join me on that quest, okay. uh, follow me on Instagram and Instagram only. Uh-huh. And uh, it is Vinny Scotto. That is my Instagram. I changed it. I recently got rid of the SIMT. So- Don't know why. So is at Vinny Scotto. How do you spell Scotto for the non-Italian people out there that aren't douchebags? (laughs) S-C-O-T-T-O. All right, so um, check out Vinny. Get him to 10,000 likes. He wants to be the Kim Kardashian of Muay Thai. Um, And that's, that's, that's his thing. So social media, yeah, you guys can check us out there, obviously, on all of those things. Follow us. Drop us a line. Drop us comments. Um, If you guys like the podcast, listen, uh, we also talk about that. Go on iTunes. If you're listening through iTunes, please rate us and comment. When you do that, you help us go up the ranks in the uh, library of you know iTunes and all the millions of podcasts that are in there. So help us out with that. Listen to us anywhere regardless and thank you for listening if you do tune in that's we really appreciate it 
And that's it, guys. We will be back in two weeks. We got a special guest for the next show. So we'll be back in two weeks with our next episode. Thank you for listening once again to The Striking Corner. We love you all. Be fair to each other. Be nice. Be nice to your neighbor. And love uh, love everyone in combat sports. And uh, and hashtag fuck you, <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to The Striking Corner with Eric Rivera and Vinny Scotto. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more Muay Thai and kickboxing content. Stay tuned for the next episode of The Striking Corner.